Welcome to another episode of The Lab. In this episode, we'll be exploring the ideas I have set up for the CCSS Grade 5 Math. So to start, if anybody has any ideas for this area, please feel free to leave a comment. Uh, numerical expressions using parentheses. Hmm. Yeah. Moving on. I'm not going to read all of the info blocks to you, but feel free to pause the video and read it. We'll wait. Or maybe we won't. Okay. Here's Rick. There's the coal. Good. This is uh, just one idea I've had of utilizing the current coordinate pairs. Um, later on, I'll show you another way that I think uh, is actually more engaging with the students. The economy system within the Mominati Minecraft EDU project will hopefully be so ingrained that these types of questions and standards will be every day. I mean, how many of us sit and think about converting base 10 when we deal with money? We just do it. We don't really think about it. That's kind of how I want the kids to be. This area is just something I kind of wrapped uh, patterns of numbers ending in zero. And I'm thinking I might even include uh, a small mini game in the map for the students so they can actually shoot at targets. Looking at this, I really thought that 100 blocks would be bigger. But this is actually pretty manageable. I may utilize this in other grades as well. Most likely I will include all of these store based questions or types of questions within one or two stores somewhere in the town. Multiplication, three factors. I really like the way that this bakery layout turned out. Um, I remember, just remember that at least part of the goal for me is to make these question lessons more immersive. Uh, I think it helps, this helps illustrate to the kids um, the problems and how they are, they could be based in real life. Got cookies here on the wall, some eggs, some milk, some flour, cocoa beans, apples, melons, more cookies. Shifts later, walking around. Okay, this store idea is basically similar to other store ideas, except we were we'd be dealing with uh, unit items instead of just flat out prices. Taking a look at which would be the better deal. Okay, again, ni very nice. The bibliograph is, bibliograph bookshelves are nice. Or sorry, these aren't bookshelves; these are just regular shelves. But they're really nice for displaying objects like this. Um, I could easily see fractions being displayed like this as too as well. Okay, hmm. multiplying mixed numbers by mixed numbers. Or oh, sorry, this is comparing mixed numbers difference addition I want to thank Matt for this idea as you can see there's a pen of 12 white sheep in here the 
concept behind this is, of course, to die, use the die to die the sheep and make it match these fractions. Um, I think that would be pretty interesting for the students. Here's an example of using recipes. So the recipe for an actual book sh a bookshelf, or sorry, um, I guess a book block. Um, using that and fractions. Okay, this next section. Uh, now this was actually kind of new to me. Our school will be going full CCSS starting next school year. Uh, the concept is, uh, I guess, called area models for multiplication and division. <clears throat> um, once I figured out, it's actually quite clever the way it works. Uh, now just to make see if I can get it to work um, smoothly within Minecraft. I'm still kind of playing around with this idea in my mind on how I'm going to do it. So basically you have this fraction, two-fifths. You have this fraction, one-third. And if you build up a wall using equivalent fractions for this and this and combine them, the yellow and the blue mix to make green. So the answer for this question, of course, being two fifteenths. Hmm. Here's just another example of that same type of question except going re in reverse. This time I've given them the answer. I want them to come up with the factors. So there's the answer. They would be expected to build the two walls and to simplify it. Alright, let's fly over here. Okay, so here we have another um, fractions, mixed numbers. Okay, using Mario and his pies and cakes. Here is <coughs> Um, another area that I'm not quite sure how to deal with so converting standard measurements uh, if anybody has any ideas please feel free to let me know alright this is of course uh, uh, an idea that I started in the fourth grade of my, if I'm not mistaken the fourth grade area I really like this concept of doing line plot um, I guess the idea would be then, of course, to figure out interesting ways that the students can gather information and what we can actually graph on this. Okay, these next three are very similar. So I tried to ramp each one of them up. Here we have the basics of volume. Okay. So one cubic block, of course, this being two cubic blocks. Another way of demonstrating two cubic blocks. Uh, you get the idea. Something that's slightly irregular. Then we come over here. And this next one is basically just a bigger object with multiple layers with depth, height, and width for the students to calculate. And then this final one is an irregular object that can be calculated by breaking it into parts, uh, breaking it into smaller objects, of course. So if we would break the diamond in here apart. We wouldn't actually break it, but we could. We'd break it into this part, calculate this, calculate this, calculate this, gold. Um, the point being to explain that volume is additive. Now, remember when I said that I would visit another way to work with coordinate grids? Well, this is it. Um, I was looking at, down at my Zans mini-map. If you take a look, bottom right corner, you'll see my Zans. You'll see that these lab areas I've broken up into grids. Each grid, of course, each square in that grid being a different standard. Um, then I thought to myself, hmm, why don't I just use that? So, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the Zans, I'm going to use the grid 
And <clears throat> this first one, I think I'm thinking of creating an ice biome age, if you have, couldn't tell. <laughs> Snow and this little guy here, Ice Explorer. Um, and the students will travel using only coordinates I've given them and the Zen's minimap to get to locations. There could be a location where there's a chest of food or maybe there's shelter somewhere or a, a bed or something like that. Something they would want to get to. Maybe a scenic, you know, top of the mountain type thing. All right. So in this one, same thing, coordinate grids. But in this, in this case, they'll be given a map. Take a look here. Let's look at my awesome map. Okay. Here you see a map. And this is a map of what I'm looking at right now. It's actually just finishing since I've added so many things to it. Okay. Um, you see where we are in that white arrow. I would give the students a map like this and they would actually travel to a whole bunch of different landmarks and very interesting things and then they would record their landmark or their their findings um, and then they would I'm still debating whether or not I would have them do it in a book and quill so they could actually give it to me digitally what did you find and what and what coordinates was it was it at excellent okay then the dreaded geometry. <laughs> if anybody has any thoughts about these last two standards, 5G3 and 5G4 for grade five. Uh, I just can't coming up, can't come up with anything. So if you have any ideas, let me know. I think um, that's about it for now. So that's the tour. We managed to cover 23 of the 27 standards for fifth grade math within Minecraft. I feel like we've done a good job. Uh, if you please feel free to make a comment, share, or just let me know if this was helpful. All right, thank you.